I appreciate Brother Allen Sinclair. I tell you what, we uh, serve together on Macedonian World Baptist Missions. I believe one of the greatest mission boards Amen. around. Amen. And uh, I just whispered to him last board meeting. I said, would you come up and preach for us sometime? And he didn't know it was going to be awesome preaching in August. And he's been pastoring Berean Baptist Church. Before then, he was a missionary in Germany, and we supported him. Remember him? I remember he came and preached, and I think it was in his furlough in 2003. It was our missions revival. He came, so he uh, was a missionary over in Germany uh, for many years. So uh, I'm looking forward to the message. Uh, this month's been so good, and I appreciate Brother George and Brother. Um, uh, you know, I just I appreciate preachers sharing in this meeting. Because, you know, I know you're busy. I know you're, I know you're very busy. Brother Chris, come all the way from Rome, Georgia. And there's no quick way to get here from Rome. But uh, it's sure closer than Grand Junction, Colorado, I'll tell you that. But I appreciate all you men of God praying for this meeting. And I found out Brother Rick Spence is real sick, so y'all pray for him. And again, I want y'all to pray tonight, especially for Brother Randy. Because uh, uh, I don't want to see him lose his voice. Do you? I believe God's got some singing for him to do. And so let's keep praying for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I told him when he asked me, I said, uh, are you sure? You did pray and fast about that, right? But uh, I do praise the Lord for the opportunity. It's a joy. Uh, I told the Lord a long time ago, or I asked him, told him whatever, that uh, I'll just preach whenever he wants me to. And, and uh, uh, I love to preach the Word of God and, and uh, nothing better and preaching the Word of God, seeing souls saved, and encouraging folks, and trying to be a blessing. Uh, I, there's nothing else I want to do. Anything else is work. But anyway, uh, <laughs> now nah, I tell you what, and, and uh, we were missionaries for almost 14 years to Germany with Macedonia World Baptist Missions, and then the uh, uh, Lord called us home. I wrestled with it for a year. Uh, I didn't want to leave Germany, and uh, wrestled with it for a year, and God gave me Scripture to confirm in my heart that that's what he wanted me to do. So we left and uh, came back to the States. And then uh, uh, God called me to a little small church over in Hansville, Alabama, in Coleman County. And uh, we were there for nine years. And, and uh, then the Lord called me basically back home. I'm, I'm pastoring down where your pastor and I grew up. Amen. I didn't know him then. Didn't even know till what this week that he grew up down there. And uh, the only thing I resent about him is he was a Glenwood Hills Panther. I was a DeKalb Yellow Jacket, amen, and uh, Little League football. And, uh, but anyway, uh, it's just a blessing to be able to be here and, and to do what God's called me to do, amen, as a preach the Word of God. I want you to turn in your Bible as you would if you, to uh, 1 Kings chapter number 19. 1 Kings chapter number 19, and we'll read the first few verses there in that chapter and then share with you what God's laid on our hearts. And uh, uh, by the way, I will say this, uh, kind of like tonight, I have sung with the quartet before, just to let y'all know, uh, just like tonight, they were in the pew behind me. And uh, so anyway, <laughs> but uh, praise the Lord. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 and beginning in verse number 1. The Bible says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much again for the privilege to be back here at Whitfield Baptist Church. And God, thank you so much for their pastor and God, the friendship that you're building with us, dear God. I, I thank you so much for that. And I thank you for this church and this church being here. And God, what you're doing through this church here in this community, dear God. Lord, for many, many years and often I drive up through Dalton and the first thing I think about is Whitfield Baptist Church and their pastor, Brother Cofield, dear Father. And God, I thank you so much that you've got a church here preaching the gospel, winning souls to Christ, 
And God, just being a blessing to this community and to the people here, God, thank you for that, God. Lord, I pray that you do the same in Atlanta, dear God. We need good Bible-believing churches in Atlanta, God. I pray that you'll help us there. God, help us at Berean Baptist Church, God. Please, God, help us there. But God, I pray that you help me to preach the Word of God tonight. Father, forgive me of my sins. Fill me with thy spirit, dear God. Help me to preach what you want me to preach. Help me to be a blessing and encouragement to these folks here tonight, Father. And Lord, how we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. For it's in Jesus Christ's precious name we ask it. Amen and amen. I look here in this text, and, and of course we know the story there in, in uh, verse number 4. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Elijah wanted his life to end. He was ready. He, was, he wanted to give up. And uh, folks, I'll be honest with you, of course the title of the message tonight is just simply, Why I Cannot Quit. Why I Cannot Quit. Folks, I don't want to quit. Uh, we've seen a lot of quitters in our days. And a lot of preachers that quit, a lot of song leaders that quit, uh, a lot of deacons that quit, Sunday school teachers that quit. And uh, it, it, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I was thinking just there a little while ago, I had to pull out my phone to uh, use a calculator, amen. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I've, been, I've been saved for 36 years and preaching for 35. Kind of blows my mind. I still want to jump up when they ask for the young preachers to come and preach, amen. But, uh, but here we see is, is uh, I, I've been preaching for 35 years, and I'll be honest with you, I've never seen, and we've probably heard all of this thousands of times, but I have never seen or been through a time in my spiritual life what we've been going through for the last nearly two years now. And uh, it has been as a pastor... It has been one, has no doubt been the most difficult time of my life. The decisions that we had to make, the, 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 the burdens that were on our hearts for our people, the prayers that we prayed, begging God to not let COVID get into our, 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 our membership and, and to just, you know, do that to our church. And, and God blessed last year. We had a few that did have it, but it wasn't a bad situation. Now we've got this again. We've got the Delta, whatever. Uh, I like Delta flying on their planes. I don't like this other stuff. Amen. But, uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's bad news. Amen. It really is. And, uh, and, and you get, as, as last year, you kind of got dogged if you did one thing, and you got dogged if you did the other, and and everybody everybody had the right idea. Everybody knew what to do, and whatever you did was wrong. Amen. And uh, it was just it, it's a very difficult time, and and uh, very difficult experience. But I'm thankful that God got us through it. But I know there there's been a number of preachers that have quit through that. A lot of maybe that wanted to quit. Amen. And uh, a lot of church members that quit. I'll be honest with you. Hey, our church, man, we were pushing. Man, God was blessing. We were getting close to 100 in our church, and we were shooting for that 100 goal. And then all of a sudden, boom, it just died. Amen. Our church didn't necessarily die, but that goal, everything that we were doing just hit a brick wall, and uh, it has been difficult to get back over that wall again, or at least even get close to the wall. Uh, we, we praise the Lord when we've got 50 or 60 in our church now, and uh, we've got the buses, we've got uh, had two buses running, we've got a bus and a van now, and the bus is... Uh, the last few weeks has only been hitting probably six or seven or eight these fat past few weeks. Of course, kids have started back to school and, and, uh, you got the people that are afraid to come without a mask, those that, that, uh, you know, do come with a mask, whatever. And, and it's just, it's just crazy how the devil has pit the church against the church and, and, and so forth. And, and, uh, I'm not saying those problems are in our church. I'm just saying it's been a difficult year, folks. And uh, and yet, with all of that, uh, I, I I just and then the, of course other things too. You know, uh, all you got to do is cough, and you've got COVID. Amen. I mean, good grief! Uh, you away from me. Amen. You know. And uh, uh, did you hear so and so sick? If they got COVID, phones are ringing, people are talking, and ah, amen. And uh, but but here we see, folks, is is with everything that went on. 
and now you've got you've got situations today. I mean, I live in Atlanta. We're probably 10 minutes. Y'all remember last year, the Wendy's, they burnt down. We're about 10 or 15 minutes from that Wendy's, amen. I mean, I, I, I came to church one day and, and uh, pulled up in the parking lot and there was three state troopers hiding out behind our fellowship hall. And uh, I went up to them and told them how much I appreciated them being here and, and uh, so forth. And, and, uh, uh, but uh, uh, come to find out, they were hiding out because the uh, undercover GBI agent was, I guess undercover, was, was coming around to, to give them some information and then he was going back. And there's apparently just around the corner from us a big drug house selling a bunch of drugs and everything. And... Uh, and then, of course, I probably should. Of course, we're not on Facebook or anything, amen. But, uh, but, but here we see. They might not appreciate that. But anyway, uh, and then a couple of weeks ago, I came out and and uh, there was a car, a couple of cars parked in the parking lot, and I kind of had an idea what they might be. But uh, I, I, I finally, one of them was still there, and I went up to him and uh, asked if I could help him. With it. Turns out he's DEA, amen. And uh, showed me his badge and everything. I said, man, that's pretty. I'm glad I'm looking at it from this direction. Amen. But, um, but you know, it's just, it, it, it's things going on around our neighborhoods. You, you can't knock on a door anymore. At least down there, you can't knock on a door. Everybody's got the camera's doorbells. And they look at you, not, not answering that door. And uh, especially when they see me. Amen. But anyway... Uh, but here we see is, is it, it, it's just everything has changed. Everything has changed. We can't even do ministry like we... I mean, we, we want to run the buses. We want to bring kids in. Now you go to talk to a kid. And, oh, what are you doing talking to my kid? And, uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just everything has changed. And everything has become more difficult. And, and uh, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy out there. The Bible talks about in 2 Timothy chapter 3 about perilous times. In the last days, perilous times. We are there, folks. We've got neighborhoods. I told one of my deacons that's lived there for ages, and I said, uh, "I said, hey, brother, this is one of the neighborhoods we got to get. We need to come into." He said, "Well, brother, uh, uh, don't bring the ladies, amen." And uh, I'm like, "Okay," but uh, but it, it's just it's crazy the the things that are going on around our, our our communities. And I've had we had when I first got there, we had bus ministry. We had, we had vacation Bible school. I'm driving the bus and, uh, we had two, we had to combine some bus routes for vacation Bible school because some of the men were working, some of the drivers were working. So I combined two different bus routes. We had two different neighboring, uh, apartment complexes get on a fight against each other on our bus. And, uh, man, they were going at it. I had five police cars in my parking lot, uh, for one night. And, uh, cause one kid went, just went, Ballistic, amen. And uh, we've had, we've had uh, when I that uh, vacation Bible school, I drove up into one of the parking. We had a bunch of those kids that got in the fight. Trying to get my story straight, those kids that got in the fight, the ones that started were from this one apartment complex. And uh, and, and so when they got off, uh, went back through there to pick up some some kids there. And when all those kids came up, they'd never rode the bus before. And then they got on, and I said, no, you're not going this time. What do you mean we're not going? I said, you're not getting on this bus and fighting. You're not riding tonight. And so they got off, or they didn't get on, and, and, uh, but that night we came back to drop that little girl off. They were waiting on us. We turned a corner, and as I, I stopped to let that girl off, even the adults got into it. Because the guy was in a Suburban, pulled up this way, and blocked my way out with the bus. And uh, we let them off, and I told the men, I said, and they were throwing rocks at the bus. They were throwing all kind of things at the bus. Praise the Lord, they weren't shooting at us, but I, I, I'm surprised. I just praise God for that. That was God. But uh, some guy got out of the bus, or out of that uh, Suburban, and I didn't know if he had a gun, what he was. I'm trying to watch the kids. I'm trying to watch my adult male workers. I'm trying to keep control of everything. And, uh, and so anyway, we uh, got... They, they got the men back on the bus, and I figured that Suburban was going to get out of the way or I was going to move it with that bus one, amen. I floored that bus as much as a 1986 bus would floor, and uh, I just went, he backed up, and I went on through, amen. 
But I'm, and they had, they had told me before that they found, they come in their subdivision sometimes and, and they'll find police in there with their AR 15s pointed into a dumpster holding some kid or somebody that, that they've been looking for, you know. And, uh, I'm telling you folks, we're living in perilous times. It's difficult. You, you go on visitation, you're watching everybody, making sure that nothing happens to them through the neighborhoods. Amen. But you know, even with all of this, I cannot quit. I cannot quit. And I want to share with you some thoughts that God gave me along with this text. And the first thing that, that I cannot quit, uh, reasons that I cannot quit, I cannot quit, I cannot throw in the towel, I can't raise the white flag of surrender, I will not tap out, I cannot give up. But here we see one of the reasons is, is God just simply will not let me. Amen. God will not let me. Look at verse number 5 there. He says in verse number 5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Verse number 7, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Now what pastor is, not, what pastor is going to quit when God says arise and eat? Amen. But, uh, but just the fact that God said, Hey, get up. I've got work for you to do. Amen. Arise and eat. Get up out of that doldrums. Get out of that mully grub. Come up. My mom used to say, I'm going to mop that floor with your, your lip. Amen. And, uh, and, and so here we see is, is he will not let me quit. He's providing my needs. Amen. As he did there, he said, arise and eat. The food was there. He was pro providing for Elijah. And folks, I cannot quit because God continues to provide for me. Amen. Matthew 6, 33. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Hey folks, God's taking care of me. Amen. My soul tonight, I got good spaghetti. I got cheesecake. I got chocolate delight. Hallelujah. Amen. God is taking care of me. Amen. Amen. And, and he, he meets my every need. Philippians 4.19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He gives me the rest I need. He gives me the food I need. He gives me the care I need. Hey folks, He meets every need that I've got. How can I quit on that? Amen. Amen. Oh my soul. But then we also see that not only He will not leave me, He's providing for my needs, but also not only is He providing for my needs, but Jesus Christ, God is ever near. Amen. Look at verse number 7 again. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him. He knew exactly where he was at. Amen. He knew exactly where Elijah was at. He knew exactly what Elijah was going through. He'll never leak. Look at Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 1 with me if you would. One of my favorite uh, texts here is in Isaiah chapter 43. It encourages me so much. You know, the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. I'm glad we've got this King James Bible to encourage us with. Amen. But here we see is Isaiah, uh, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 1. But now this, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. How many of us can say, well, glory for that. Amen. He says in verse number Two, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Serbia for, or Serbia for thee. Oh, folks, God is with us through the waters, through the rivers. Hey, they shall not overflow thee because God is ever near. Amen. He is with us. He'll take care of us. He will watch over us. He will help us. Amen. Oh, whatever the need is, He's always there. Oh, what a blessing to know that. 
even in a day's journey. Look at verse number 4. And he himself went a day's journey into the world. He thought he was hiding from God. He thought he was running from God. Sometimes we may think we can, folks, but God knows where we're at every second of every day. He knows exactly what we're going through. He knows the trial that you're facing. He knows the trouble that you're facing. He knows the heartache that you're facing. He knows the misery that you're in. Hey, I've got one of our church members. I just got the phone call today. Passed away this morning. Early this morning, about 3 o'clock, I got the phone call. But you know what? He's been sick for a while. He's been miserable the last few years. He's just been miserable. And, and God, But God has taken him home. He's no longer miserable. He's no longer tired. He's no longer weary. He's no longer uh, having to carry that oxygen tank. Stayed with, stayed here in 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 uh, this world. Amen. Oh, folks, he he is shouting glory. I can't be more excited for my friend than I can for him tonight because he is walking those streets of gold. He's not having to use a wheelchair anymore. He's not having to have somebody bring him to church anymore because he can't come on his own. Glory, hallelujah. He's up there shouting, well, glory with Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, my soul, I cannot quit. Because God will not let me. But then I cannot quit, folks, because the journey is just simply too great. Look at verse number 7 again. He says, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great. Oh, folks, I, like I said, I've been, uh, I'm, I'm 59 years old this year. Uh, getting to be an old man. And uh, my body's telling me that too often. Still, still got to, I, I hope that God will give me at least 20 more years to serve Him, if nothing else, as pastor. Now, it's just, it was mentioned, I think, that we were just in revival last week, had Brother Tom Wallace come and preach for us. I wanted to roll out the red carpet, amen. Oh, my soul, 91 years old, still serving God, drove from, I think, around Chattanooga or something, no, Murfreesboro. Drove from Murfreesboro down to our church on Monday night. He preached Sunday morning, preached Monday night. After he preached Monday night, he drove from Atlanta to Murfreesboro home. I had to take a nap on the way up here, amen. My soul. But he, and, and you know what he's done? He's asking God to let him preach at least until he's a hundred. And he's already got a preaching engagement when he turns a hundred. Oh, my soul. And he, pre- he didn't get up there. Well, I want to tell you a little story. He preached, amen. He preached the Word of God. Oh, my soul. I thought he needed to get up with the young preachers, amen. Man, what a blessing he was. But here we see is, is folks, the journey's too great. We can't quit. There's too much to do, amen. There's too many souls that need to be saved, amen. There's too many people hurting that need to be encouraged, amen. There's too many people trying to run that need to be caught up to and helped, amen. There's too many mamas that are missing their sons, amen. There's too many sons that are missing their mamas. There's too many people dying and going to hell. Folks, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done, amen. Souls need to be saved. Hearts need encouragement. People need intercessory prayer. People are hurting. Missionaries need support and encouragement. Amen. Oh, my soul, what the missionaries overseas are going through. You know, I'm going through this in America as an American. I can voice my gripes and and all of that. They're in a foreign country. They have no leg. They are there by the, by the, well, by God, amen, His, His authority. But really, truly, when it boils down, 
They're not like our folks, but you know, just letting them in however they want to. They got to have a visa, amen. They got to have permission. But here we see, folks, is it's, it's, they're going through this on a foreign field. And I couldn't imagine what it'd be like on the foreign field. It was bad enough over here. But I'm telling you, churches need tithes and offerings. Amen? There's too much that needs to be done, folks. Too much that needs to be done. Then we see also, I cannot quit because of the wor Word of the Lord still touches my heart. Amen? Look at verse number 9. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Notice that the word of the Lord came to him. Oh, folks, there's nothing like this precious King James Bible that you and I hold. Amen. I tell you what, it's already a blessing to meet this guy right here because I know his parents. Amen. And I love his parents with all of my heart. They're great people. And uh, one of these days I'm going to take them on again. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but, but here we see is they're some of my dearest friends. And then I come to find out he starts telling me about he, he does this stuff on the King James Bible. <laughs> Amen. You're coming to Ellenwood. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we're going not to keep him. Amen. But, uh, but, but we're going to get him down there, amen? I'm looking for, I'm already excited about that. I'm already excited, already looking. Hey, folks, there's nothing like this King James Bible, amen? There's nothing like the Word of God. And think about those two men walking with Jesus and said, didn't our hearts burn within us as He opened us the Scriptures, amen? Oh, what a blessing the Word of God is. I can't quit because I've got a precious book that needs to be shared, that needs to be preached, and needs to be loved. Hey, some of y'all may not know, I think you're Pastor did, Brother Dean shook. When he got his brain cancer, when he had that brain cancer, he got to where he went to bed with his Bible in his arms. And he fell in love even more with the precious old book. Amen. Oh, folks, the Word of the Lord is coming to me. I still love it. Jeremiah 20 and verse number 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. Oh, how we open up these pages and they speak to our hearts, to whatever our need, our concern, our, our problems are. God has it speaks to us through all of that. Amen. I still not only love it, but I still need it. Amen. Psalm 119, 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Every From leaving Germany to uh, go into Alabama, to come in here, it, to come into Atlanta and pastoring down on the southeast side of Atlanta. Hey folks, God has given me Scripture for every move. It's a light unto my path. Amen. I need this book. I can't take a step without the Word of God. Amen. I can't hardly make a decision without the Word of God. Amen. I want God's Word to guide me. I need God's Word to guide me. I need God's Word to help me. Amen. I still seek it. Psalm 119, 131, Open my mouth and panted, for I longed for thy commandments. How many of us still long for the commandments, amen? And I've always thought that interesting. One of the, one of the things, to, and we kind of talked about it a little bit tonight as we ate supper, but you know, we've got a thing now where people just don't want to... When, when I got saved, 1985, at Kmart in Conyers, Georgia, I had a young lady come into my, my office. I was the Sporting Goods Automotive Department Manager there, Young lady came in there, and, and her husband is right at closing time, a Saturday night. And a young lady came in, and she started. She turned the display radios on to gospel music. I said, "Where in the world's that coming from?" 
And so I went to go find where the station was, was, where it was sta- uh, tuned to, amen? And, uh, and so here we see as I met her, I talked to her, and she started telling me about how Jesus had saved her soul. I've been for two years thinking I was saved. I was working in the bus ministry. I was uh, uh, helping out in children's church. I was singing in the choir. I mean, I was doing everything you could, but a lost man. And I got over to Philadelphia Baptist Church in Conyers, Georgia. And I, I went, I don't know if I've got any of those tracks with me today or not, but I, I went out on visitation. And the young man I was partnered with had a gospel track, Macedonia Prince, that says, uh, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? And as he handed that guy the track, and he asked the man, he said, sir, how would you answer this question? And at the same time, the Holy Ghost was asking me. And it was right there where God started working on my heart. And I, there, at the, there at the Kmart in Conyers, that young lady started bragging on the Lord, and the Holy Ghost said, go ahead and tell her your salvation experience. Tell her how you got saved. He knew I couldn't. And he said, you're lost. I said, I know I am. And really what I said, I said, I'll go back to, to our apartment, I'll pray on the edge of a bed with my wife, and I'll get saved there. God said, no, I need you. you you're going to get saved now. If you're going to get saved, it's going to be now. So I went in my office and I, 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 I asked the Lord, I bowed my head and said, Lord, I'm lost and I'm on my way to hell. And God, I need you to save me. Amen. See, there wasn't any of that before. I just went to an altar and, and, and made a, a, a profession, but there was no confession. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Oh, my soul, folks. So that Saturday night in 1985, I don't remember the day. I remember it was about 9.33 in the evening. I so much wish I could remember the day. And I so much wish I could run into that young lady again. But here we see, folks, is Jesus Christ, God saved my soul that Saturday night. And in February the 16th, 1986, at Victory Baptist Church in Cumming, Georgia, Brother Jerry Matson, he's in heaven today, but he was a missionary to Hampton Roads, Virginia, would go on the ships and preach the gospel to people coming from all over the world. Where the gospel can't be, he could get on those ships and preach to the Chinese, to the Iranians, to the uh, Iraqis, to all these people that can't hear the gospel in their countries. But here we see, folks, as he was preaching that night, and God called me to preach that night. And, and, and I've been preaching ever since, preached my first message. My kids still laugh at me. I've got it on videotape somewhere, or audio tape. And uh, uh, I said, instead of saying idolaters, I said idolaters, amen. And, and uh, ah, amen. <laughs> See how green I was when I first started in missions. One of my first meetings was at, uh, I can't remember the name of the church now, in Stone Mountain. They've combined with Forest Hills now, if you remember. But anyway, uh, I, uh, I was at, get, went in on Wednesday night. Pastor wasn't there. And I had my little improvised uh, uh, display table and everything. And the preacher, the, the guy that was introduced, he said, Brother Sinclair's going to come up and share his burden for Germany. I went, huh? I thought I was preaching. I had no clue. I was as green in missions as anybody's ever been, amen. But God blessed, folks. God blessed. But I still need the Word of God. I still seek the Word of God. I'm thankful for preacher friends that I've got. I'm thankful for my wife that's been a blessing to me. Y'all, please continue to pray for her. I know that you have. She's getting better, but still struggles after her surgery. She had a pituitary tumor. Uh, she had one back in 2002, and they removed most of it. Well, it came back uh, this year, and, and uh, so she had that removed. Very traumatic experience, but she had that removed, and, and they do feel like they got all of it, but uh, it's been a rough go these last few weeks as she's recovering, but do pray for her. But I'm thankful for my wife and how she helps me and encourages me. And, and yet at the same time, folks, there is nothing like this precious book. Amen. 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 Nothing 
like this precious book. And I, I'm thankful I've still got it. Psalm 119.89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. By the way, I just noticed that clock back there. Brother, don't tell my deacons that you've got a clock like that, brother. One of mine went out and bought me one about this big around, amen? <laughs> oh, me. But here we see is it still burns in my heart. Luke 24, 32, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while He talked with us by the way and while He opened to us the Scriptures? I'm so thankful for this precious... I can't quit because I got a book that helps me, amen. I got a book that's real, amen. It's not fiction, folks. It's real. It's genuine. It's alive, amen. Oh, what a blessing this old book is. But then we see also, I cannot quit because that still, small voice still speaks to me. Look at verse number 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Folks, I'll be honest with you. I love the strong winds. I love the earthquakes. I love when God does mighty things. We're studying right now on Wednesday nights the life of Elijah. I mean, I'm sorry, the life of Moses. And when, when you get to the parting of the Red Sea, I mean, you've already been to the burning bush. Now you're getting to the parting of the Red Sea, and it's like, my, can you imagine being there and seeing this sea, uh, the Egyptians coming up behind you, ready to just destroy you, and then God opens up the sea for you to walk across on dry ground, and then you get across, and all of a sudden He puts it back on the Egyptians and takes their life, amen, to defend you. Whoa, glory, what a mighty God we serve, amen. I love the strong winds. I love the earthquakes. I love the big things that God does. We're praying right now. We're, I'll just be honest with you. We're, we're 249 or 294,000 dollars in debt on our, our building. And, uh, they built it way back in 2005, moved in 2000. We're still paying on that thing. And, uh, when I went, started there, we went to the bank, me and the deacons and, uh, trustees and, and we went there, and, and uh, then as we signed all the papers and everything, then something was said, what about the debt? I said, what debt? What debt? <laughs> and uh, so we've been, we've been asking God to help us pay that off, but here we see, folks, that's going to be a big thing for our church when He does, amen? amen. And we know He's going to. Sure. We know He's going to. And, uh, and so here we see, I love, but then the still, small voice that speaks to me and only me. In Zechariah 4, 6, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Oh, folks, I'm so thankful for that still, small voice that speaks Amen. to my heart and helps me. Amen. If it doesn't help anybody else, he helps me with that still, small voice and then I cannot quit because God does not care about my excuses. Amen? Look at verse number 10. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Kind of like those old Israelites. Wine, wine, wine. Amen? And then the same thing in, in uh, verse number 12. He says, in, uh, or I'm sorry, in verse number uh, 14. He says, and he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. My soul, folks, here we see is, uh, Elijah's just full of excuses, and we get that way. I'm tired. 
I'm afraid to witness. I can't afford it to tithe and faith promise and offering. We've got all kind of excuses. Yeah. It's a blessing to hear these guys coming to sing when one of them got off work and the other one's fixing to go to work. Because too many times you have revival or special services and, oh, preacher, I'm sorry, I got to work those days. Well, you got off at 4.30, we didn't start until 7. I mean, my soul. And, uh, but here we see is, is excuses. I remember the Kingsman wrote that song, Excuses, amen? And then he came back and wrote another one. He said, we're going to put the swimming pools in with this one, amen? But the money they made off of it. But here we see, folks, is we can come up with all kinds of excuses. But God's not eager to listen to our excuses. And, and He's not eager. I can have all kinds of... God, I want to quit now because of COVID. I, I, God, I can't take it anymore because the people are unfaithful. God, And I, I'm not talking about my people. I, I, honestly, I've got some of the most faithful people. But but there are some, amen, that, that just aren't as faithful. They come, man, our Sunday morning crowd, boom. We've got, we'll have the 50, we'll have the 60 somewhere in there. And then Sunday night, we got 20. It's like, what happened? Wednesday night, we've got probably the same 20. Like, what happened? What in the world? And, and so here we see is, is excuses. God's tired of our excuses, amen. He doesn't care about our excuses. He's looking for faith, a faithful man who can find, amen. He's looking for faithfulness. God doesn't care about my excuses. I cannot quit. I can't quit because I'm not alone. I'm not alone. In verse number 18, he says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the days which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. I have 7,000. Moses thought he was all alone. Most, or, I'm sorry, Elijah thought he was... See, I'm told you we're studying Moses on now. I brought him up. And he's gotten in here somewhere, amen. But Elijah's not alone. He thought he was. Sometimes we feel like I'm the only one doing this. Nobody else wants to work in the bus ministry. Nobody else wants to cook the meals. Nobody else wants to come to Sunday school. I'm the only one, God. But we're not. Sometimes we feel like I'm the only one still preaching the King James Bible. I'm the only one still trying to win souls to Christ. We're the only ones going door knocking. But we're not. It's a blessing to come in here and see the buses, to hear talk about visitation and soul winning. Amen. Oh, what a blessing. We're not alone. I can remember one night when I was on deputation, uh, back in the days B.C., before cell phones. Amen. I got sick as a dog one night. I, uh, uh, the pastor had a son-in-law that was a sheriff's deputy. And I, I love that kind of stuff. Amen. I came out of high school thinking that was what I was going to do. Applied at City of Covington in Covington, Georgia, and then applied to DeKalb County. DeKalb County called me and I said, nah. Amen. Too rough there. But here we see is, is, I went riding with that guy through the night after Sunday, Sunday services. I rode with him all night long. We stopped at a Denny's or something like that and had a breakfast. Well, <clears throat> I, I, somehow it was a mistake in the order, and I got two breakfasts. I wanted to be nice. I ate them both, amen. And I got sick. And I'm in a prophet's chamber inside the church. The only phone is in the office. The door's locked. I can't get in there. I wanted to call 911. I don't know if I had food poisoning or what. But I wanted to call 911. And, and so I, I thought, well, I'll just drive myself. I'll find a... that gate across the parking lot. I mean, I was stuck. Kind of like Brother uh, McDonald Baptist Tabernacle. Uh, Brother West, I was in his church and he told me not to let that door close behind me that it will lock. I didn't listen. 
Amen. But anyway, I was sick. And all I could do was say, God, I need you. God, I need you. And I don't tell a whole lot of people this because some folks will think I'm Pentecostal. But I'll be honest with you, I felt the arms of God wrap around me and put me to sleep. I could not sleep. I couldn't get to any Tylenol. I couldn't get to anything but God. And God took care of me. God took care of me, put me to sleep that night, got up in the morning, and the pastor's wife was had some kind of pie for me. <laughs> oh boy. But uh, anyway, amen. I'm not alone, folks, and neither are you. We're not alone. We've got God, but there's also so many other churches out there. Hey, what about, you look around today, and, and I, I'm excited what I see around here, the young people. I got a bunch of old folks in my church. We're praying, we're praying for God to send us a youth director. We need a youth director and a pianist, amen. You're not going to make any money, but we got, we, amen. <laughs> but here we see I'm not alone, folks. There's others that are going through the same thing. And they're there as well. And then leaves us with verses 19 to 21. I can't quit because young people are still eager to serve and still need to be reached. Look at verse number 19. So he departed thence and found Elisha the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen before him. And he with the twelfth, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Folks, there's so many young people out there that need God, that need Christ, that need somebody to love them, need somebody to teach them, need somebody to encourage them. I noticed Brother David Nix today was talking about a preacher friend of his, one of his uh, preaching heroes, if you will, one of his mentors that passed away this week. And uh, Brother David was just talking about how he looked up to him, how he encouraged him. And I wanted to make a comment to the post that, you know, like I said, I'm 59. It's not that old compared to some that, that are around. I know that. My father-in-law keeps reminding me. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but here we see, folks, is I'm suddenly one of those that the young people, I want the young people to look up to, not build myself up, but that's who I need to be. The one that young people can look up to and say, and, and come to for encouragement and help and, 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 and so forth. And folks, I want to be that one. There's still people, again, young people, old people, there's still people that need help and need encouragement. I can't quit. The journey is too great. The journey is too great. I don't know how long we've got left here on this earth. I believe with all of my heart. And, and I know preachers have said this for a hundred years, but I believe with all of my heart that if there's ever a time period for Jesus Christ to return, it is now. We are going through things that's worldwide. I mean, it's it, this thing happening over in, in uh, Afghanistan is no surprise to God. I mean, every I've never seen a time period when we're looking at the at the establishment of the one world government and and the antichrist taking over this thing. We don't have much time. I mentioned the twenty years. We may not have two days, and this thing will be over. And folks, there's too much that needs to be done in those two days for us to quit. I cannot quit, folks. I just, I just want to keep going and keep going and keep going and doing what God's called me to do. Warren Wearsby said, But the Lord did more than send His servant out to recruit new workers. Uh, he also gave the assurance that His work and their work would not be in vain. God would use the words of Haziel and Jehu and the words of Elisha to accomplish His purposes in the land. Even more, He assured Elijah 
that his own ministry had been a failure, for there were still 7,000 people in the land who were faithful to Jehovah. We cannot quit, folks. There's too much that needs to be done. Let's have a word of prayer, and then I'll turn it over to the pastor. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for helping me preach. Dear Father, I pray, God, that something was said to be an encouragement and a help to these dear folks. God, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Thank you so much for guiding me in the message, dear God. Thank you so much for your love and your watch care, God. We love you. We thank you. And God, I pray that you'll take this service. And God, if there's anybody here that's lost, God, I pray that you'll save them. If there's somebody that's wayward, God, I pray that you'll bring them back into the fold. God, help us to be faithful to never, ever quit. And Father, we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. Amen.